I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome back to Unashamed. Uh, we're still on our uh, respective abodes. I'm in Gulf Shores. Zach's in from North Carolina. Zach, glad you could join us today. It's always good to have you. I'm, I'm here, Al. And <laughs> uh, and also, did you get? I got you a deal on a hotel in you New did. Orleans. So I did appreciate you, that. Did you, you saw the email. I did see the email. Okay, this one Zach's looking out for me. I Lisa am. and I are going to have to spend some time down there as we talked about uh, dealing with her uh, breast cancer issues. And so, Zach, my erstwhile cousin is looking out for me which is i'm working on the cuisine next so we've got some top cuisine's important i know you gotta I, keep that strength up i know your love language al i know it. you're good well it's not it shouldn't be hard to find in new orleans the food is <laughs> and that bitty good. bad meals there no it's that's good. true they it which fits in quite nicely with being free to eat things on a sheet dropped from heaven <laughs> <laughs> Lots of that on the cuisine. Phil, how did you feel when you read that for the first time? Because we've been in Acts 10, and you you were reading that for the first time in your faith as a hunter and an outdoors person. I was glad, and I was actually surprised <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that he would be so redundant on the fish of the sea, the ducks, the yeah. four-footed animal. He said, thought, I might. I get might. up, kill them. I mean, no, no, no. Uh, like, I don't know whether he really means to kill them and eat them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. He, he, I remember having the same old, thought. Old Peter, old Peter right. didn't leave. No one stone left unturned as far as, as, far as his. Well, Jace, I, I may be mistaken, but I think, thinking back in the early 2000s, Late late nineties, maybe that this that phrase that text in Acts ten, arise, kill, and eat was the first Duck Commander T shirt that we came <laughs> up with that had a scripture on it. Well, I didn't, that I went, didn't remember that. No. Yeah, that was I think that's right. I could be wrong, but I, I think it was the first one, and it was really clever because it was a hunting reference. Of course, arise, kill, and eat, but it was yeah. also a biblical reference, which I thought was pretty I good. remember thinking the same thing just as an outdoors person. When I was reading this for myself, trying to figure out whether I was going to believe in God, we all go through that. I mean, I was young, but I remember – you know, Jesus. You caught, felt more powerful, didn't you? Well, I well my 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 thought was I started in the Gospels, and I was like, he called a bunch of fishermen. I just remember thinking, huh? Well, I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, just no concept of of anything. And they're 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 billed as uh, just just. Men that are unschooled and ordinary. Uh, yeah, unschooled yeah. and ordinary. Yeah, that's men. Acts four. You were searching yeah. for the verse. Yeah, y'all, y'all still got the hat. I don't. I don't remember a hat. I don't see the. We need to. Y'all need to bring back the original shirt. I remember that. I, but it, when, when I remember the shirt coming out, I was at a either Jace or Phil. What of y'all were speaking somewhere? I can't remember who it was. So we're talking twenty years ago. And the way I heard you, one of y'all pull, I think it's Phil, you pulled out the, the text, you read the text and then everyone, and it was kind of out of context. So everybody's like, you know, what do you, what's he going to say next? Arise, kill and eat. And you said uh, something to the effect of, so what we're doing here at that commander is we're just following commands from the almighty <laughs> well, it, orders from headquarters. And it, and it was like something like whack them, stack them. If it fly, there's a line you guys had. It was hilarious. I mean, in the place just like erupted. If it, yeah, I think them, it was like them. whack and stack them or something yeah. like that. Orders it, from the almighty. So, yeah. so let me give you a stars aligning story. So Missy's been in Nashville you know, with the grandkids helping out and being a good grandma and doing some kingdom work. So she gets in last night. So first question she asked, she's like, well, how'd the podcast go today? And I was like, they were good. I said, we're in Acts 10. And I said, I had a weird thing happen. And so I told her about I think it was the last podcast. That the I Taco the, Bell story? The Taco Bell, yeah, the guy yeah. with the sign. Yeah. So I'm telling her because I'm she. she's my greatest supporter and my greatest critic. So 
<laughs> I said, you know, when you're just thinking about spiritual well, things. She, she took, and she took, I could be wrong, but I doubt it, to a new level. You woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, she'll she'll tell me, you know, whether whether I was she, off base. She added, you could be wrong, <laughs> and I don't doubt it. So, <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> exactly. Which, look, your true friends in life will tell that's you. That's true. That, I agree, Jay. No, just as well as yes. And that's what you need in your life. I mean, they hold you accountable. You're so. exactly right. A great wife is a great cheerleader, but also a great critic because they're the ones that know you the best. So I was like, I mean, we're in Acts 10. I'm trying to explain that even though – God chose Israel for this plan. When we get to Acts 10, there's a new awakening where all people are coming through the same gate here, and his name is Jesus. Yeah, that's right. With, with all different culture, cultural background, skin color doesn't matter, your your behavior, wherever you, whatever you've done, wherever you've been, whatever you look like, whatever Our you do for living. has yeah. proved to be... In my humble opinion, we could be wrong, but but but, but we're, we're, we doubt it. Yeah, I mean, it's, so, so, I, I think we're right on this. That's what I'm saying. But yeah, so I start telling her the story with the guy with the sign, and there's there's different, you know, racial people involved. They're gathering. I go through the whole story, and uh, she's like, "Well, you're not gonna believe this. I had a sign story today," and I was like, "Really." So when she's driving from Nashville, as she's getting on the interstate, she looks up. Now, think about this. Most people with the signs, they're hanging out when you get off the interstate or a red light. Or This person was, while you're getting on the interstate, he's looking for a ride. And so she... She said he had a big sign and was like waving it almost in the lane that you merge on. He he's he's trying to get people's attention. And she said, So I'm like, please don't run out in the road. It's it's a safety issue. She's not gonna stop and pick him up, but he's he has a huge sign. And so she said, you can't help but see it. And she said, do you know what the sign said? And I said, what? She said, the closer I got when I read it, it said, I am not a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, that's that's get, away, get away from him. <laughs> if, you, if you gotta say it, if you gotta say it, man. This <laughs> is like, have you ever seen somebody with a sign like that? I said, I don't get no. out anymore, but I would, I would be saying, you know, where's my where's my weapon? <laughs> Sounds you, you like Dad thinks one. he may be a sick. <laughs> well, it's and you know, but just the thing she said after that, what you know, kind of got comical because she was like, "I mean, do you realize that no one's gonna pick you up just because if you wind up dead?" <laughs> the embarrassment of you picked up somebody that said I'm not a serial killer. She's like, yeah. that would be the most embarrassing way to die. Well, the <laughs> trick is, is, I mean, how did he arrive at that particular statement unless he was one? Well, I'm not sure it's a big confidence builder, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm not saying he's a serial killer, but I'm But I'm you not. know, Dad, that's interesting, though, because you think about it. You talk about how cultures can change. Because I remember you telling me stories of when you were young you know, middle school up to high school age, and I, really almost even college age, that you used to hitch rides back and forth from, you know, Dixie and down where you guys live up to Shreveport all the time. Like, nobody thought anything about Hitchhiking it. Hitchhiking was a major way to travel. Right. And, and people just, they never thought anything, but they just stopped. A guy's walking along the side of the road, needs a ride, or if you stuck your thumb out. I mean, you never even thought about no. somebody attacking somebody. No or trying to rob them or whatever. And so that's how much the culture has changed now that when we look at that, we're like fearful. I mean, a, a guy's got to have a sign that says I'm not a serial killer, hoping that it'll encourage a little bit of hope to pick me up. I mean, that's where we're at as a culture. It's, it's quite different than it was. That's happened in dad's lifetime. I know we start. So we started talking about it. Cause I was like, well, I made a spiritual analysis out of 
seeing a guy with a sign, but I'm really not sure what the spiritual analysis is of that. <laughs> I'm not sure. Except that our culture has de-evolved into where it is now, which mm-hmm. is much more fearful of people walking on the side of the road. That's yeah, for sure. It is. Yeah, but I thought it was humorous. Well, the good thing about today, Al, is we don't have to review where we no, were. No, P- Peter's going to do the review for us, Jace. I've noticed when the Bible is redundant, th- we ought to pay special attention. Correct. Something something happened here yep. that the Lord wants us to get. We, we, need, we need to see what exactly happened here. Well, we've already made that point, Jace, because Paul, remember, tells his story of when he was struck down two other times in the book of Acts, which we read all three of them for that very reason. That was a huge moment. And I think this what we just read in Acts 10 is a huge moment because Peter has to go back and basically defend what he did and why he did it. And so he's going to retell the story. Uh, when he gets to chapter of the, 11. Some of the most uh, powerful verses ever. Uh, and it's pretty cool that Paul said in that uh, Ephesians 4, he said, as a prisoner of the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. And he goes through this little list to clarify what this is all about. There's one body, one spirit, one hope. When you would call one Lord, one faith, one baptism, all these things you read about page after page, he condensed it down to about two little Bible texts. And and while he was at it, he said, you know, I'm in jail right now, but I mean. Well, the key these verse. Men, these men were, I mean, Paul and Peter and all of them, they were. What what's the word? They are relentless. I mean, yeah, for the Lord. But the key verse in that field is verse three of chapter four of Ephesians when it says, "Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit yeah. through the bond of peace." Which is what's being discussed here. The Spirit has been poured out, so it was poured out on the Jews. Peter got up and preached Jesus. They responded, received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and now the same Peter in Acts 10 has seen a miracle from God that the Gentile world has also had the Spirit poured out on them. And so now you start to see the struggle among people of having this unity in the Spirit. And this is just at the beginning. And the power of it is the mystery is that the mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together, which is unheard of up to this point, are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. The whole thing is brought to a head the mystery and what and, and how to get out of it. Just come, think come about together the po- as one group and yeah. Think about the power of that unifying the oh, planet. You, you, yeah. This is God's idea of unifying the planet. I believe that's the first time it's been clarified that simply, but that forcefully is that little that little text right there in in Ephesians chapter three. It, especially if you're reading over here while it's happening, you know. You know, well, that's a that's a good point, Phil, because a lot of people will talk about the mystery of Christ, and they appeal to mystery and as if it's something that's not known. And and uh, yeah, and I'm but I'm like, he, no, he tells you what the mystery is here in Ephesians, and and I think what happens then, he, even how we misinterpret when you don't understand the context of what Paul's doing here, you'll take a verse like Jace just read that make every effort to keep the spirit of unity through the bond of peace. And what we what we end up doing is we actually end up flipping that, and we try to keep the spirit of of peace, the bond of unity. But that's not that's not the same thing. Where the the, the you keep the spirit of unity through the bond of in the bond of peace. So e- eager to maintain a unity of the spirit. So that's the key. Is it's a unity. It's 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 mul- it's it's ethnic people groups that would and not I mean not just ethnicities, but like. In any form or fashion, we're talking about completely two separate types of people that would never do life together. Oil and water, they don't mix. 
But in, in the Spirit, in Christ, there's a unity that happens and a peace that is a result of that. There's one body, yep. one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each each one of us according to the yep. measure of Christ's gift. I, I mean, that is, you can't uh, overestimate or overemphasize what what got, what Christ is doing here with these t- these people groups. I mean, it's it's way bigger than than anyone ever thought, which is always the case with God's promises. They're always m- way bigger than we imagine them when we first hear them. Who were the captives when He ascended on high? He led captives in His train and gave gifts to men. Who exactly was that group? Did when He, he ascended on high, He led He led a host of captives. Hang on a second. Before we answer that question, let's take our first break. So, Zach, on my script here for our good friends from Tommy John, it says, do you want to know a simple life hack to feeling better every day? And I got to admit to you, I thought it was, I was asking Maddie, I thought it was a misprint. Do you know what a life hack is? What What is a life hack? Well, yeah, that's like, yeah. You've never heard of the term life hack? I have never heard of this. I've never heard of it. Tell us. Wow. It's because I'm deceptively smart, but tell us a wise like you, one. It's like a. It, well, I mean, <laughs> well, slow down there, Jace. But it, yeah, it's like you got a little something, a, a quick little thing you can do to make your life a lot better. Oh well, that I it's get. Like a little, I'm mean, you're hacking in like a computer hack. I'm hacking oh, in. Oh, that must be just, it. This little, oh, you never knew this. You never knew this it's little thing out term. here existed. If you just do this one little tweak, you'll you know you'll be happy. All right, so I got it now. So hey guys, you want to know a simple life hack to feeling better? <laughs> I know, Al. <laughs> Buy better underwear. Exactly. Tommy John's premium second skin underwear. Now, I can speak to this because oh, I have yeah. been a huge fanatic about Tommy John's for many years, way best. before they were sponsors of our podcast. And they have what they call the second skin underwear. Now, Jace, if you got second skin, I mean, you don't even really realize you got skin, right? It's just there. It just does its work. I think it means I forgot I had underwear on. There you go. They have breathable, lightweight, moisture-wicking fabric. It has four times the stretch of all the other brands. They've sold over 20 million pair. That tells you, Dad, that a lot of people are wearing them. I've got about 12 of them in my in my drawer. And as they say, they don't have customers. They have fanatics, uh, which I Great. love. They also have the best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free guarantee. So you have nothing uh, to lose by trying them. You're going to love them. I've been loving them for years. We all wear them and appreciate them. You get 20% off your first order right now if you go to TommyJohn.com slash Phil. That's 20% off on your second skin at TommyJohn.com slash Phil. That's TommyJohn.com slash Phil. See their site for details and get your life hack going. We're getting down a rabbit hole here, Phil. Well, <laughs> that's a good question there. I don't, uh, we need to. Well, well that's, that, that's there's been a prophecy. lot of debate about that. But yeah, that's, that's, that's Psalm. Sixty-eight, eighteen. Right. Do we really want to do that? Wait, but let's save yeah. that for when we get to Ephesians. Yeah, let's save it for when we get to. Ephesians. We're going to Ephesians. I just thought I'd throw it in there. Then, well, it's a, I it's can a answer. Dis- it's a whole podcast. I, I can answer that question, but if we're going to ever get back to Acts eleven, I'm not going to be able to answer that question today. <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody accused us of having ADHD on this podcast. I don't know why <laughs> they would say that about us. We but. will, but for those of you on the edge of your seat, we will get there because we're going to Ephesians next. Yeah. But I do. I want to mention one thing, Judge, that that uh, that I didn't quite get to work in as we lead into Acts eleven today was that I thought back to Luke seven one through ten uh, when I, when we read this story about Cornelius because you remember Jesus had already shown that he his capacity was bigger than just the Jews even though he came the way he did he did it the way he did it there were little glimpses all throughout his ministry. And one of them was that story in Luke 7 when he's nearing Capernaum and a centurion who was there in the area had a servant who was dying. Remember that story? And so Jesus was going to go to him and the centurion sends word to Jesus. He says, look, don't, don't, you know, don't bother. Lord, don't bother coming here. I know you got the power. I tell people to go and do stuff for me all the time. You've got the power uh, if you're willing to heal him. 
And Jesus looks around at the people around him, including the 12, which Peter would have been one of them, and says, I have found no greater faith in Israel than the faith of this centurion. Because he understood Jesus had the power to heal from a distance. He didn't even need to show up to be able to heal this servant. And he did. He healed the servant. So I just thought about that text in the context of what we're talking about here is that Jesus has always shown the capacity that it was larger than just the people that were around him. I mean, he understood it all obviously coming in. So I think he planted those seeds for these guys to realize as the story unfolded once he was gone. So I don't know if Peter remembered back to that moment or not with this interaction to Cornelius, but Jesus had already shown that there was faith outside of just, you know, physical Israel. Yeah. Yeah, And even Uh, one of the soldiers at the cross, I think is the only time in the gospel that he's declared the son of God. And it was, it was made, that claim was made by one of the soldiers looking on. It said, surely he was the son of God. A Roman soldier. That's right. A Gentile, which is powerful. Well, let's look, let's uh, get to chapter 11, because as Jay said, it's really going to be a look back at everything that we studied in the last couple of podcasts in Acts 10, but it's going to be done through a different prism because in verse one, uh, Luke says the apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So I'm sure this was quite intriguing as the word is bouncing around. And I did think it was interesting that they re- the word was out that they received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, and here we go, every time I, uh, that uh, Luke uses this term, you know he's zeroing in on something. The circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them, which is really interesting because the word is bouncing around of this great thing that happened. But when he gets back, he receives criticism because of this going to eat with Gentiles, you know, which was this, you know, norm that you didn't break. So Peter began, and then, and I love the way it says this, explained everything to them precisely Now, I've noticed when you're under criticism, the more precise you are, the better. As it had happened. So here's his retelling of it. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance, I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners. It came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, birds of the air. Then I heard a voice telling me, get up, Peter, kill, and eat. And I replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The Lord spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers, now we get a little more insight into that because before it just said some people six brothers went with him uh, and we entered the house the man's house he told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say send a Joppa for Simon who is called Peter he will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved as I began to speak the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning this is an important uh, piece of the puzzle here. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if so, if God gave them the same gift as he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? So that he's making his argument there on why they should accept what's happened. And then it worked. When they heard this, verse 18, they had no further objections and praise God, saying, So then, God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. You kind of get that idea here that they're, they get the conclusion of this, and they're like, this thing is way bigger than we thought. <laughs> he's, even right. got, he's even opened this up to the Gentiles. I mean, it is a, that would probably be a pretty, pretty shocking realization. And I, and I wonder how much, Zach, that they actually, like even understanding it now, how much it still worked on their bias about the 
Jewish issues because we're not going to go far. We get to, to Acts 15, and we're going to be dealing with this whole thing again with this same group, you know, and they have to make up this, you know, council letter and all this stuff about, you know, accepting uncircumcised people. So I think it's a lot of times what people do, they realize it's right in the moment, yeah. but you still hold on to your things that you're not sure about. As you guys know, um, Lisa and I, um, probably I'd say half to, to two thirds of our speaking out across the fruited plains uh, of America are about pro-life and uh, specifically about abortion, uh, sort of the front end of what I call this pro-life battle that we're involved in. Uh, we join one of our sponsors, Preborn, uh, their network of clinics, and, and we speak on their behalf to raise money for them. Uh, they've saved over 58,000 babies, uh, which we are very thankful for what they're doing. And one of the great things about when we go and speak at a banquet is, you know, we're there to tell a little bit about the family story and a little bit about Lisa's story of having her own um, abortion and how that affected her over not only her life, but our lives as a married couple. And so we find that uh, the testimonies that we get to hear in those settings, because we're always here from someone that came to the clinic, and once they heard you know, that baby's heartbeat, it changed them. Uh, and so that's what these guys do. Uh, they, they love being able to tell the stories. Uh, there's one young mother who found herself in an unplanned pregnancy. She's strongly influenced to end her pregnancy uh, at a planned parenthood clinic. So even as they administered the abortion pill, she felt cold and anxious. And we can relate to this because this is exactly the way Lisa describes her experience. She fled home. She starts searching for how to reverse the curse, which led her to a preborn network clinic. The nurse immediately administered progesterone and calmed her greatest fear and her baby was saved. And there's many, many thousands of stories just like this where not only was a baby saved, but a young woman's life was saved as well because of her relationship with Christ. So each of these babies are truly miraculous, and every day, Preborn celebrates 200 miracles every single day, which is a great blessing. $28 a month can be the difference between the life and death of a child. When a mother meets her baby on ultrasound, here's that heartbeat. It's a divine connection, which we love. So let's join together. Let's help these mothers choose life to donate, it's very simple. Take your phone, dial pound 250, and say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, keyword baby. Or you can go to preborn.com slash unashamed. That's preborn.com slash unashamed. And I think, I think as a pastor for me for many years, this resonated to me in that, Zach, because you know, we let's face it. I mean, every decade to twenty years, even in current our current s- structure and system, we undergo method changes that cause all this angst and criticism and unrest in our churches. And so, I, I think it deal, goes back to this very root that was right there at the beginning. And change is difficult. Uh, and we're talking about methods. We're talking about a lot of different things. But this was a case where. In, Everybody non-Jewish has an opportunity to accept the message of God. This should have been something everybody was excited about without criticism, but it just doesn't work that way. I mean, I think it shows you how strong human nature is and how strong it is for people to think they've been right about something for whatever period of time. Yeah, I think I'll echo what y'all said. I think the point is that 11-9, when he said the voice When he's retelling the story, spoke from heaven, do not call anything impure that God has made clean. Granted, the the freedom to eat any food is awesome, but the point was you start thinking about that statement. He's talking about people. And when you you tie in all the verses of being reconciled, I mean, just do a quick study on that that God was reconciling the world to himself through Jesus. You know, think 2 Corinthians 5. Th- this is what he's saying. Because the natural question is, well, how did God make people clean? And then you start tying in with why they're sharing about Jesus. And they're talking about the cross. And they hung him on a tree. And he was murdered. And he you know, went through the cross and the resurrection. This is God's plan to reconcile Israel and 
the entire world. And so that's why when you see a statement like uh, Barnabas, when he was called to go to Antioch because he saw, where's that at, where he says uh, he saw the grace of God, what the grace of God had done. Verse 23 of chapter 11, we're fixed to get to, it says, when he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God. Just think about that statement. Well, where do we get the grace of God? What, what is the central piece of the grace of God? It's making humans clean yeah. through a, a sacrifice and an innocent death of himself on a cross. So I really think it's a big point. And wrapped around it, Al, I think a side point is these people— what happened here in chapter 11 is underestimated because you had believers who were at first criticizing. They, they went from being critical. It says they, the NIV says criticized in 11.2. They criticized him. And those people, 16 verses later, repented. Yeah, that's a good point. So... Try to find that going on in the religious world today. Yeah. You know, we, we always think repentance is someone who doesn't know the Lord. It's for the unbelievers, not yeah. the believers. And in yeah. this situation, you had repentance happening because they, they were being so inclusive and not recognizing that God made everyone clean. But and they remember, did repent. Remember, Peter was having to proclaim a message here that he had to do himself first. I mean, that sheet dropped down three times, and Peter was still pondering it before he came to the conclusion that God says, I have made these foods now clean. And which, he was which, talking which, about which men. He probably, I, I mean, I would probably argue Peter, I mean, obviously he's like, I didn't really agree with God, but it's like, who am I to argue with him? I mean, <laughs> That's, but it, right. that's kind of how I hear it. And so I think about like we have these things in our own our own churches. We have these things in our own churches that are like um, that we could equate to the circumcision, because I think the issue here, like, I don't I don't know if these people would have had pr a problem with him eating with Gentiles as long as they were circumcised. I think it was that they were hanging on to this one like remnant of uh, the of Judaism that we got. We, Got to keep that circum. Don't let the circumcision thing go. That thing, it was because that was so integrated into their um, worldview that to, to be circumcision was a sign of the covenant. Think about that. This was a sign. This was the sign that hey, we are in. Uh, we are we are part of the covenant people group with God with circumcision. So it was a big big deal for them. And so I think that was their issue. But we have our own versions of that. You know, now I mean, we grew up. Uh, if you hadn't researched our family at all, we grew up church Church of Christ, and for many years in the Church of Christ, you couldn't use instruments in worship. And uh, I mean, that's not the case for most of them now. Certainly not the one you guys go to in, in uh, WFR. But I remember twenty five years ago, I remember um, Randy. What's the guy from Abilene? Randy Harris. Harris was speaking at a youth conference. There was a skit. And there was a guitar on stage as part of the skit. They weren't going to use it in worship, just part of the skit. And some people got upset that there was a, a, a an instrument on stage. And Randy heard about it. And I, I just never forget his opening line of, of his sermon. It just stuck with me all these years. He, he, he said, you can't pour new wine into old wineskins. And it was a way. But I mean, but we every denomination has their version of of that, of the thing that we're going to hang on to. And, but, but it's, it's probably more of a tradition that, uh, or something that, that, that is not bound in, in the new covenant. And, um, so I still think we have like remnants of, of, of this in our, in our churches today. We all, and we, and Peter continued to deal with this, by the way, like this, this shows up again in Peter, who at the time is now at this particular moment in history, he's defending the case for inclusion of Gentiles, even though they weren't circumcised, but that will pop up in his life again, which again, just goes to show the grace of God and how patient God is in dealing with us in our theological errors and our, in our discrimination against people like God is patient with us yeah. working towards this uh, spirit of unity through the bond of peace in us, but it's not something that's finally realized in the moment. Yeah, you're right. And it, and it will tend to come up again and again. Let's take another break. 
So, fellas, I don't know if y'all knew this or not. The liver is the largest and heaviest organ within the body. And as much as 10% of all the blood in the body is present in the liver at any one time. Did y'all yeah. know that? I do now. <laughs> you can't unknow it, can you? It's a big deal, Al. I've never seen my liver, but I heard if it starts going south, You're that's in trouble. Problem. So, Zach, yeah. you and I uh, had some high liver enzymes, some bad numbers uh, on one of our uh, wellness checks, and uh, we that that led us to this product from Liver Health Formula. So how, how does that affect you? My numbers are great now. I'm normal now, so, um, you know, we don't, we don't know what happened quite yet, but the whole thing turned out good. Yeah, and that's why we took this product. Uh, the American Heart Association indicates that adults with fatty liver, which is what Zach and I were suffering from, uh, makes you three and a half times more likely to have heart failure. And it affects 100 million Americans uh, every year that have this idea of fatty liver. Uh, your liver has 500 key functions. And if you get a fatty liver, it, it forces you to gain weight and then to lose energy, uh, which is bad. And it also helps you to not filter out all the toxins and everything that comes at your body. There is a solution uh, that we have tried and works, Liver Health Formula. It's an all-natural supplement. Contains 11 clinically proven botanicals that help recharge and protect your liver. So if you're looking to ignite your fat-burning metabolism, boost your energy, and transform how you look and feel, try Liver Health Formula. You're going to receive a free bottle of blood sugar formula. It's going to reduce your sugar cravings when you order today. Try Liver Health Formula by going to GetLiverHelp.com slash Unashamed. That's GetLiverHelp.com slash Unashamed. Get that free bonus gift and get those liver numbers where they need to be. Yeah, well, I'm thankful. I was I either wasn't paying attention or I was, you know, Phil was converted too late for me to be indoctrinated into some of those beliefs. Because when I heard that was a thing, I was like, well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I mean, it you, really. You, ne you never bought it? I never bought it. So, yeah. you know, it just seemed like I kind of justified it by like, well, no matter where you meet, there's gonna they're going to be wrong about things. That that was kind of my thought. I remember thinking, you know, you got 150 Psalms there's, there, that are being written to a stringed instrument. I mean, it, it just, it just seems silly. But think about me. how many yeah. groups, even outside of how we were raised, how many groups have war over worship. And we're talking about just well, how right. we worship I mean, the creator. I mean, you talk about something that should be way lower on the, on the scale, you know, um, and yet that's what we get into. And, that, and that's my point. I mean, this, this idea resonates through that, what the key moment here is these people now have an opportunity and have experienced salvation. I mean, well, that's right. got to be at the forefront. I mean, that's got to be above whatever else, you know, we can debate or talk about. We can't lose sight of that. Well, it's an well, interesting point that Zach brings up, but I feel like it, I mean, part of the reason I think I don't get hung up in those kind of controversies in churches is just the mentors and teachers that I resonated with that where I learned the Bible, they always made a, uh, there was two things that stood out, which is why I listened to them. They focused on the relational aspect of the Bible, mm -hmm. that these words lead to a person. And, and just to give you an illustration in our text of that, just while you were talking, I looked at this. In chapter 11 and verse 1, it said they were, they were criticized. I mean, uh, when they realized the Gentiles had received the word of God. Well, what was the word of God that, that we're referring? What, what, is that, what does that mean right there? Jesus. Yeah, they had shared Jesus, and, and they were welcome to respond. And they did, and they got the Spirit. Well, then even in Peter, when he goes on to say, uh, when he began to speak in verse 15, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Because we say, you know, these are the acts of the Holy Spirit. But watch what he said. Then I remembered the word of the Lord. He went mm -hmm. back to what Jesus, Jesus who, who in John 1 is the word that became 
flesh. Yeah. And you say, well, what is your point? My point is the words that are that we're reading and the word that Jesus embodied reflects the promises of God, which is a perfect tie-in to the promises made to Israel, to Abraham. And you say, well, what does all that mean? When you get fast forward and read something like 2 Corinthians uh, 1, 18, Paul said, but as surely as, as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you to Silas and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him it has always been yes. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And you'll see that in the book of Acts constantly. Yes, the the Spirit is confirming the Word. The Word is reflecting Jesus in human form, but it's also reflecting that when God says something, every person has a choice. Are you going to trust him? Are you going to trust what he said? Or are you not? And mm -hmm. that that working together, to me, is a key to understanding all of Scripture. That's, you can go all the way back to the garden, remember? God said, don't eat that tree. Well, if Adam and Eve would have just trusted him and said, okay, but they wanted to make their own decision about good and evil. Remember, it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so even this, this Bible is made of a tree. You know, it's paper. And I guess if you were reading it internet, it would be a digital version of a tree, I guess. <laughs> but <laughs> but my point is, it, it makes you come to a conclusion. Are you going to trust what he says and and Jesus not by accident was referred to as the word the word becoming flat words communicate are you going to trust it or are you or are you not and so that was my point about ahead, about final, these these arguments final word that develop look they all the arguments are about the words and it's like we're trying to come up with a formula of where we do all the words and all the commands correctly instead of looking at it as these words come from an actual being that you trust even though you may not understand everything along your growth process and journey you're going to trust the lord and that's why i think cornelius was converted he he was trusting god he just didn't understand that this was about jesus yeah, and so instead right. of throwing rocks at him, saying, well, you don't even believe in Jesus. We're disfellowshipping you or whatever. You're doing these things wrong, and you got the law wrong, and you got the foods wrong or whatever it was. They introduced Jesus to him, and guess what happened? Well, God opened his heart. They responded. The Holy Spirit came. And so I think that's just the way I look at it. So when people start arguing about frivolous things or making it, doctrine or you know whatever they want to call it it's like draw a line in the sand and say if you do this on the you know on disagreement about the words and how you're going to go about about worship rather than who you're worshiping on and loving each other and figuring it out then i think you know and you, you know it's be a lot better that. you know it's funny about that too if you look at if you, here's a, like a litmus test you could like you could at, look at at someone or even your own heart and if what you're if you're talking if you're talking about issues if you're talking about doctrine and and you're not talking about who Jesus is that that's the sign you can and I've we I grew up with this but it's like it's all about the right belief system. It's all about you know getting the right belief system. Like this, but what you said is key. No, no, we're talking about a person here. Yeah, we're we're pointing people not to a belief system. But that's not what we're pointing people to. We're pointing people to a person whose name is Jesus. And and if and and when you get sucked into the sectarianism, which is basically these uh, you, these sects that are sects that are like. Uh, separated out, and this is our little group here, and here's our language of access that you got to get this language of access to get in the group and learn how to communicate this way, and here's the belief system you have to adopt, and here's all the things. Like, you're, you're not talking about the person of Jesus, 
And and I, I've thought, man, I probably shouldn't tell people that because then they could probably start talking about the person of Jesus and manip- manipulate people into their their sectarianism. But the truth is that won't happen because if you start talking about the person of Jesus, you're going to be changed. He changes people, not a system. It's not a system that we develop so we don't have to be good. As T.S. Eliot said, we are pointing people to a person. And I saw this meme I wanted to tell you all about. I just pulled it up because somebody sent it to me this morning. It's a meme, and in the background, you've got like four people in a room, and they're and they're all wrestling and fighting. And then the caption above those people is everyone online arguing about Christ as King. In quotes. Then there's another guy who's sitting there just working on his computer, just doing his work, and he's calm and he's just knocking it out. And it says, "Going about my business since Christ is King." And I thought, man, that's the difference. We can fight about Christ being king. We can fight about all the truths of the gospel, or we can live it out as if it's true because it is true. And I think that only happens, Jay, to your point. And you can only escape these debates and these frivolous matters when you understand that this is about a person named Jesus who is drawing us into a relationship with the one true God. That's what it's about. I'm not sure if you guys knew this or not. But one of our sponsors, Fast Growing Trees, is the biggest online nursery in the U.S. with more than 10,000 different kinds of plants and over 2 million happy customers. Were you guys aware of this? I wasn't. And I've never really considered hugging a tree, but if I could get one to grow fast, I might. It would get it would get more huggable quicker. Exactly. Well, they got blueberry bushes. I'm looking on here now, so I need you got to give me the code because I'm actually trying to build a border wall on my property. Yeah, some, some kind of I don't. I'm looking at the evergreen trees here. I might. I literally just pulled it up. Well, so Zach's already looking, folks. You get fruit trees, palm trees, evergreens, house plants, whatever you need, whatever fits what you're trying to do. Uh, it's easy to order online. Zach is literally looking it up as we speak. While he's trying to love his neighbor. Exactly. So he's trying to block off, give him a little shade. Whatever you need, it ships directly to your door in one or two days. They have a 30-day Alive and Thrive guarantee, Zach. So that means that it's going to come there ready to rock, ready to go right into the ground. They also offer free plant consultation forever. Uh, which we love that because that way if you have any issues. So, Zach, this spring they have the best deals online, up to half of all select plants and other deals. Uh, listeners to our show get an additional 15% off their first purchase when using the code UNASHAMED at checkout. So, Zach, when you go on there, be sure you use UNASHAMED as your code. You're going to get 15% off additional. So that's fastgrowingtrees.com. Use the code UNASHAMED. Check them out. Offers valid for a limited time. Terms and conditions may apply. So people would respond to that, and I've had them respond. That They're like, well, you know, 1 Timothy 4.16 says, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, yeah. because if you do. And they'll come up with these doctrines. But right before that, in verse 9, he said, this is a trustworthy saying. I mean, he's giving advice to Timothy. We have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, and especially of those who believe. Well, yeah. then he starts, you know, command and teach these things. And, and he goes through different things you do. But my point is, all of these things are in reflection of the actual being that is God. Yes. And he's a complicated being to us because he's God, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But even in 2 Timothy 4, and Al, you remember this, when when I was in Bible school, you know, I got up and shared what I'm sharing now 30 something years later in 2 Timothy 4 too, It says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage. And so I made a big deal about, because they had a little, uh, what do you call it? It's like a little marketing sign. Yeah, it's like a symbol. Yeah, they had a symbol on the pulpit there where the students would practice, you know, their teaching and preaching. And it had the Bible open. And I said, y'all need to put a picture of Jesus there because he is the word. 
become yeah. flesh. It, the Bible reflects him, which reflects God. And I was just trying to make that connection, which that didn't go well. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to change the marketing ploy, you know. Yeah. But I was just saying we argue about all these things that seem to be so far away from the character of God. It's like you're arguing just about words, not in the context of the word is leading you to an actual being. <laughs> It's not it's it's not that the doctrine doesn't matter. It's not that we're anti-doctrine. We're, what right. we're saying is is doctrine you see through the doctrine to Christ. Yeah. And exactly. and if if the doctrine terminates on itself, meaning if the if it's only about well it's about getting your doctrine right. Why? But the question is why? Because the doc, correct doctrine points you more correctly to who Jesus is. I know him I know him more clearly. But when we make the doc about the doctrine itself, then you do end up with a dead, cold religion. It's it, it, it's dead. There's no spirit in that. And well, I, and, and it I, alienates that, which is the problem here. These Jews yeah. who had figured out that the Old Testament was pointing to Jesus, they were trying to hang on to the shadows and the laws and whatever else that was part of their heritage as being a as kind of like a bonus part of you repenting you, you okay you can come to Jesus now but now we're going to go back and we're going to eat only these foods mm -hmm. we're only going to meet at the temple or w whatever they were coming up with you have to be circumcised i don't care where you're from that just that's another thing you have to do and so you you see that there and you understand it, but what I'm saying is you fast forward a couple thousand years and you see it now, and it's kind of common in the denominational world that wh whatever these other things are that you must do, whether it's how you worship, whether it's with mute, you know instruments or, I mean, there's a lot of things you could come up with that are but different. That's one of the reasons why Jesus spent so much time using the phrase hypocrites with a lot of these same people who we're now seeing once he's gone is because he kept saying on the outside, you look like you have it. You've got the mark. You've got the rituals. You're going to the temple, but your hearts are hard. And so that comes back to that idea of the spirit. It's why he told the disciples in John 14, look, I know you want me here physically, but it's going to be far better for you that you don't have me here physically, but you have my spirit living in you. And so John 14, 15, 16 lays that out. That's why I think Peter went back. He remembered those that phrase that Jesus said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He's using a physical symbol, baptism, being immersed in water, which is what John was doing, that baptism of repentance, to now a spiritual concept of the Holy Spirit is being a result of our obedience to him, which is far better. That's why, Jace, we read the verses about circumcision. The circumcising of the heart is far more important than the circumcision of your body. Yeah. And so it's these it's the idea that that meant mankind tends to want to hold on to anything physical and not embrace that which is spiritual, which the Holy Spirit guides and leads us to. So that really becomes the difference. And I think that was the thing they yeah. were trying to, they're grappling with in this whole section. Well, the worst argument I ever had with a human being over the Bible, uh, and, and I'll say this in context, this, this guy, they had, they had been at the same church where we all meet or mainly meet. I mean, I meet at a, at a couple, but, and he, they got mad about something he didn't agree with. And, uh, so he came to my house and he basically was saying, we're, we're starting a new church, you know? And so I was like, well, why? And he's like, well, cause I don't agree. And, and he talked for a couple of hours and I couldn't figure out what exactly it was that I disagreed with. I really didn't hear anything. And, uh, so I was like, what's, what's the problem? Why, why not just keep meeting? Well, you know, you know, why Lee? I was, I was, kind of given that angle but the thing kind of got heated because he was like well you don't agree with me and i was like well i think i do i haven't heard anything 
<laughs> that I disagree with. I'm not, I'm not sure what the problem is. And he's like, well, if you agreed with me, you would come and meet with us at our new church. <laughs> and I was like, it's the craziest thing I ever heard. So I kind of stopped in that moment and said, look, I love the Lord with all my heart, and I love you. And this this is the phrase that got me. And he's like, no, you don't. I was like, no, I don't. Yeah, I love God, and I love you. He said, you don't love me, or you would come with me. <laughs> and I thought, I don't even know what we're disagreeing on. I'm trying to agree. I'm trying to tell you I love you, but you've just made up your mind that whatever rub is in the saddle here is just you're making a clean break. So, I mean, that was the end of it. It didn't have a happy ending. I was like, yeah. well, okay. You, 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 uh, probably, you, you probably disagreed on so who, was gonna be a, who was going to be in charge. <laughs> so what happened to him, the best you could tell? Well, I hadn't seen him since. He's probably you know? he's probably yeah, running his yeah. own show. But that I guess that's what it was. But you know, it was like if I'm gonna be involved in a coup, I'm I gotta hear something anti Jesus. <laughs> you know, or something fundamentally yeah. the point of the Bible that we're off. If it's if it it sounds like it was just a personal thing in leadership and he was upset and mad and wouldn't go into the details and i was trying to encourage him and help him but i thought this is not productive hmm. this this is not the alienation is never the answer no. and that's a great point about unity we're not going to always see everything the same way but we're still together because we believe in jesus all right so we're out of time uh we're going to pick up in in the rest of acts 11 because we're going to have a little paul interlude here that's going to come back in and see what he's been up to while this other stuff's going on in the early church. So we'll get into that on the next Unashamed Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.